Welcome to On Your Way Judges webinar series featuring On Your Way Talent Scholarship Program filmmaking judges Susan Ruskin and Audrey Tanner. I'm Christy Callaway, the Executive Director and your webinar host. Art Schools Network is a leading organization connecting art schools to each other, students, parents, colleges. And today we're going to be inviting you to connect with us through our chat box and our question box over to the right of your screen. Please submit them and I'll make sure that our panelists um, address your comments and questions. This series is sponsored by the College of Charleston and it was developed so that applicants and teachers had the opportunity to hear from judges exactly what they're looking for when they're adjudicating for our scholarship program. On Your Way is a program that helps students um, practice uploading portfolios and being adjudicated through an electronic process by real admissions faculty at member colleges. They will get valuable feedback. This entire program has been sponsored by Earth, Wind, Fire, who continue to give to Art Schools Network to produce tomorrow's musicians. The winners that apply for Art Schools Network will receive a minimum of a $500 scholarship and a lot of publicity from us. Once they're also identified as winners, they begin to um, receive other offers that we're not allowed to announce, but I can promise you the, that they're well on their way to college. Today we're talking with um, filmmaking judges Susan Ruskin and Audrey Tanner. Hi, ladies. Good morning. How are you, Chrissy? Fantastic. And Audrey. Hi, I'm very pleased to be here this morning. Thank you. We have people, these ladies are calling in from coast to coast and we are so grateful Audrey's woke up this early in California to be with us East Coasters. <laughs> Um, Susan, she is the University of North Carolina School of the Arts Dean of the School of Filmmaking. And she is one of our judges, as I said earlier. Susan, often our students want to hear this um, zigzag pathway towards success. How have you have such an amazing um, bio here? What was your kind of high school to now pathway? <laughs> Can you, and, and I would like the abbreviated clean version. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Christy, for having me, and thanks to the Art Schools Network. I'm really pleased to be here and to help in any way that I can because, in point of fact, I think every person has their own journey and their own path, and getting into the business of filmmaking is, can be done in many, many, many different ways. One of the things I consider really important here at UNCSA is to help our students to understand those different parts. So for me, I started at, at, at Sarah Lawrence College and I was in theater. I had grown up in the theater department. I had done everything in theater, on stage, behind the scenes, uh, and every aspect of it. And I began to realize that my interest in telling stories was more important to me than being up on the stage repeating stories that had been written hundreds of years ago. So I had been actually offered a job at Newsweek magazine, which I took because I oh, couldn't. Oh, wow. And I went to, uh, I, I, and I finished my, 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 I graduated from NYU in the Gallatin division. And as soon as I got my degree, I, you know, I had turned to, uh, to look at whether I really wanted to be in magazines. And I said, no, this is not where I want to be. So I, I picked up and went to Los Angeles and, and was very fortunate that my first job was for George Lucas. At Lucas wow. <laughs> but, you know, he at the time was, was moving up to San Francisco, so I kept saying, well, wait a minute, I, I'm not, I came to Los Angeles to make movies, I didn't want to go to San Francisco, so I moved on and worked with Robert Stigwood and then realized that <laughs> what I really wanted to be was a producer and not really be up behind the desk. So I started working uh, with Gene Wilder in development on a project that he was doing and he ended up asking me to produce the film, which I did. <laughs> and that was the beginning of a, a, a career with Gene. Uh, and I went back and forth between being a producer and being an executive for many years until I started actually writing screenplays. So now I go back and forth between being a dean, which comes first, and then writing screenplays and every now and then I'm helping to produce other people to produce movies. And that's the short version. Wow! 
Wow, that's wonderful. What a wonderful um, zigzag history. I love that. Thank you for sharing it with me. It, one th of the things, Chris, can I interrupt you, but one of the no. things I want to just point out about the kinds of careers that we choose, when we choose filmmaking, we really choose a path that I'm looking for longevity. I'm looking for not what you're doing for a long time in one place, but what your arc of your career is. And I think it's really important to note that the people that you become friends with during college end up being the people that you work with for the rest of your life. So you are always building on what you've done in the past in, into what you're going to do in the future. It's beautiful, beautifully said. What, thank you. I agree, couldn't agree more. There's a joke that I was told when I was a young art history student that said something like, be nice to everyone in your field because you'll see them on your way up and on your way down. <laughs> that is very, very, very true. And now <laughs> I work with many of these, the people I worked with in the profession I'm working with as teachers as well. Oh, how lovely. Um, well, tell us about the School of Filmmaking at UNC. So UNCSA is a, a in Winston Salem is a, it's the only it's the only campus that has five distinct conservatories on one campus, and when I first came here to interview for this job, I was just blown away by seeing you know young dancers, uh, musicians, uh, 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 drama students, and film students all working together in an environment, and I, I, I felt like this was the utopia that I was looking for when I was growing up of a college education, and here it is. And the way that UNCSA works in the film school is you're getting a BFA, so you're getting a liberal arts education at the same time as you're getting your film school education, mm -hmm. but we are one of the few schools that really allows students to get their hands on equipment and making films very early in their career at school. So in their first year they'll end up making a five minute film on a studio stage. Our campus actually looks very much like a back lot, so it gives them the feel of how to work within that kind of environment. In the first year they're generalists, they don't focus on, on any one department, and in the second year they choose between their two uh, departments that they're interested in, whether it might be directing or cinematography or editing and producing. And then in the third year, they actually get invited into the department. And once they're in the department, they will be being they will be keys on the official you know school productions. And in their third year and their fourth year, we do thesis films. And one of the things that differentiates us is that we actually pay the school actually pays for the films. The students do not pay for them. Wow, and very important to me because it it allows for a even playing field. So somebody that you know doesn't necessarily have the resources of somebody else in terms of being able to raise money will have the same opportunities as, 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 as everyone else. That's wonderful. And I know that is a standout to have access to equipment day one. Um, and there are there is a divide of schools where some you wait a couple years and others um, it's it's right away. And so I, I appreciate that you're doing that. And then funding the senior projects. Wow. Well, Thank you. Good. Go ahead. And then we're going to move on to Audrey. Okay, sorry. So um, just very briefly, you know, the top of the line equipment is very important to us, but we really feel that the students are also here for a liberal arts education. And I think that's one of the reasons that it's put us in the, you know, top, we're number 12 in the Hollywood Reporter and the top 20 in the world for variety, because the what we're looking for is storytellers. That's the key to what we're looking for here. That's perfect. Um, that, great. Th thank you very much for your providing that. And Audrey Tanner, our other filmmaking judge from Cal Arts. Now we're we're leaving the coast, we're leaving North Carolina and going all the way over to California. She's the associate provost for enrollment. And um, Dr. Tanner, do we have you with us? Yes. Um, and um, again, good morning to everyone at the webinar. Um, I'm very pleased to be here, and my path is not nearly as interesting as Susan's. <laughs> um, I, um, group, but I did grow up in a family of artists and architects and have a very deep love of the arts, um, particularly contemporary and modern art, film, and um, theater. And um, I have worked at a number of different institutions in the country. Um, pretty much by coastal. I've worked in Boston at uh, Leslie University and Boston University, and then came out to the West Coast 
and worked at UC Berkeley and um, San Francisco Art Institute and Dominican University of California. Um, my educational background is art history, and um, I find that that serves me very, very well in my position at CalArts, where I get to um, look at the, the work of um, all sorts of emerging um, budding artists, and it, it's really just a, an awesome place to be. Um, I just feel privileged every day to be able to work at such a fine institution. Oh, that's good. Well, let me just go to the next slide then, and let's tell us more about that. Um, I, I, of course, am an admirer because you have an undergraduate in art history. I have an undergraduate in art history, and I have to echo you. It's, hel it's helped me understand all the art forms um, through space and time and geography, and, and I've been a career administrator myself, as what, like you have, enabling creatives. Um, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, so tell us a little bit more about CalArts and the filmmaking sure. program there. Sure. Well, CalArts is um, a very unique institution. Um, it is a um, school that was founded by Roy and Walt Disney with the vision to bring all of the art forms under one roof. So all of our programs are in a single building. Um, we have uh, programs in uh, fine art, uh, photography, graphic design, um, dance, music. We have 40 different majors in our music area, uh, 40 different concentrations, I should say. Um, we also have um, film and video, and in the film and video, the school of film and video, there are actually four different programs, um, character animation, experimental animation, film and video, and we also offer a Master of Fine Arts in um, film directing. Um, there's also a theater school, uh, which offers acting, design, and production, and the School of Critical Studies, um, which offers master's programs um, in creative writing and aesthetics and politics. And it also serves as the school that offers all of our critical studies education, um, which is um, akin to liberal arts or general education at other schools. Um, the School of Film and Video is a very exciting place. Um, the programs are um, the most popular in campus, so it's our biggest program. It's our biggest school. Um, I will say that our students actually apply directly to their majors at CalArts and are accepted directly into their majors um, so that um, they begin in their majors on um, year one. We call them uh, metiers at, at CalArts rather than majors. And um, students really begin making um, art um, uh, from the very beginning in their first year. Um, and that does build up um, through the years um, to a thesis uh, production in their final year. Um, I think that's about it at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. <laughs> I know. I probably could say more, but it's sad. Uh, yeah. Well, I gave folks access to your website, and I know that um, if, if you know you have such amazing websites. Both of your schools are so impressive. Your online information is so helpful. Um, we are here to talk about on your way again. You guys are the judges, and we heard your your credentials, and I appreciate you giving us your career pathways. The process happens online, so students click on our website and go into the online portfolio at Get Accepted, our partners that are hosting the online application process. And they're going to make a selection once they get there of which program, so for you guys it will be filmmaking. They can um, actually sign up using Facebook, which is pretty cool, and, and um, most will, I'm sure, do that. They'll upload their files. It's very prescriptive. Um, it tells them exactly which file to upload where. Um, it's very user friendly. At the end, they pay or they have a coupon or their school is paying their fee and then it's submitted. <clears throat> this is what the judges will see when they go in to score the actual student submission. So they have this abbreviated snapshot of the student, information about the student, um, sliding scales of 1 to 100 on how to rate them on these criteria items, a place to send a message to the applicant about their audition. And let's now get to what exactly are we adjudicating. Um, here are, are the filmmaking guidelines. And what I've done is ask both Susan and Audrey to take turns addressing this list and giving some tips. And we're going to start with Susan, who's already made a wonderful suggestion 
about the um, the film itself. So I'm going to let Susan um, lead for a few minutes, and then I'll interrupt and have Audrey piggyback tag team. So Susan, please address some of these guidelines. Talk to the students and faculty about what they should be submitting and what it should look like and what you envision. Thank you. For UNCSA, I, I think that what we're really looking for, again, is, is storytellers. So uh, if you have done an absolutely brilliant completed short film in less than 10 minutes, that's wonderful. You should send it in. But if you really feel that your work would be better shown to us and been better demonstrated by a compilation of, of your best material, that's absolutely fine. Because we're really looking for a voice. We're looking for an eye. We're looking for an ability to communicate stories and communicate ideas. So sometimes a short film isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but rather a compilation of your work and your best work. <clears throat> And we absolutely agree that collaborative work is acceptable, but please be very clear about what your responsibility was in that work. Because when I look at, at uh, credits, <clears throat> I have a certain idea of what the job function of the person that was given that credit. So I might make an assumption, an, an assumption about something that you didn't mean me to make. That's a, good, that's a great point, because um, the recognition is only given to the director-producer. Yes, and, so. and, and oftentimes, you know, if, if certainly if you want to uh, apply as a cinematographer or an editor, I think it's, kind of, it's important to, to, to really state what your participation was in the project. Okay, um, speak to plagiarism. That's, that we, ha we've ha we had two issues last year, and then I'll hit Audrey up for the same stuff. Um, we had plagiarism, and then we had some content that was submitted that was disturbing, and we had to notify the school. Turned out it was not a problem, but it did make us worry about the child's safety. Um, could you speak to those two issues, plagiarism well, and safety? Well, plagiarism and safety are two major concerns here. And uh, obviously, if we recognize a piece of work as somebody else's, it will be immediately rejected, and you won't definitely will not be accepted into the school. Um, as far as safety is concerned, this is a subject that uh, I have to deal with on a, on a daily basis. We have very strict guidelines and rules about safety, which also has to do with content of what you're showing. Not necessarily to censor, because that's not what we're interested in doing. Good point. Really, you know, to make it clear that there are ways of making films in which everyone is kept safe, and that is extremely important to us. A lot of times I think young people feel like they need to show what they can do, especially when they're trying to do an action sequence. And, and honestly, it just disturbs me greatly when I see that something has been shot, for example, on a railroad track, one of the most dangerous places. And students don't often know that. I just think be conscious of what you're doing and how you're shooting something. Because you know professionals are going to be looking at it, and they're going to be aware of what you did in order to get the effect. And it's always exciting when you see that a filmmaker is making use of, of, of the language of the filmmaking to accomplish the same effect without actually doing things in reality. Oh, thank you. That is so beautiful and so 360. Um, Audrey, could you please, let's go back up to the top and of this list and, and hit on some things that stand out for you when you're going to be screening these films. Sure. Um, so I think for, for me, I think one of the most important things is for students to present work that expresses their most um, authentic expression of their artistic point of view. And, um, and of course, that means not plagiarizing and, um, and not copying other work. Um, it does also, for, from my point of view, um, mean um, perhaps taking some risks. And um, one of the bullet points up there is, is about using your imagination and your willingness to take creative risks. Um, I think it's really important um, to be able to do that. Um, and you can do that in any number of ways. Um, to Susan's point about safety, um, I think it's really important for students to really think through how they are getting to the, the point of um, presenting their work um, and presenting their ideas and, and creating the, the body work that they're creating um, and being safe and doing it and also 
um, take some risks um, in terms of expressing um, their creative vision. Um, also, I think it's really important to, um, as Susan pointed out, if you collaborate, be very, very clear um, in your artist statement about um, which piece of the whole is your, um, your specific work. Um, and also, I think it's really important to take time to write that the statement. Um, uh, there, they tell a lot about your motivation, um, um, your, your, your conception that's behind whatever it is you're doing. And um, I think that the artist statement is extremely important. Okay, and I, I apologize. We have a little bit of a sound disturbance in that. So some of that I was not able to clearly hear. Um, so I apologize to you, but I believe you started to address artist statement, Audrey. And I want to flip over and let you go first, Audrey, this time, and we'll let Susan go next. And, and that is hitting on um, the scoring. So we talked about what you want to see and the caveats. Now let's go into, um, okay, so they're only going to be scored on three items from 1 to 100. Um, could you hit each one of these? And then I'll ask Susan to do the same thing. Um, yes, can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to start with number three, originality and creativity, um, because for me that is actually the thing that I want to be able to see the, the most um, come through. The, the, um, the film that students submit. So, um, so originality, creativity, that would be the, the student's own artistic voice coming through whatever piece of work they are submitting, whether that is a story, whether it's a compilation of um, clips that they're submitting. Um, um, basically, the student's point of view. Um, also, storytelling is extremely important. Um, you know, the, the film should have, of course, a beginning, a middle, and an end. should have um, dialogue and conflict. Um, it should really tell a story that's compelling and um, grabs the interests of an audience. Um, and then in terms of technical ability, um, you know, basically using the, the conventions of filmmaking. Um, so um, whether you're using, uh, no matter which, um, Medium you're using that you're um, basically you know look, looking at how you're setting up shots, etc. So um, I you know I think that it's important that all three of those areas be there. But personally, for me, I think the originality, and creativity is is most important of those three. Okay, that's that's great. And um, all three of these scores will be average. So so. Take note, Audrey's really into the originality, creativity. I want to slide over to Susan now. And Susan, I want to pose a challenge question to you. What does originality and creativity look like? And then again, address just the, in general your, your opinion on how you're going to, or your, how you like to, you will be scoring these. That's, that's so the, a good, that's a okay, good I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. Question. <laughs> um, because I, instead of repeating exactly what Audrey said, because I'm in complete agreement with her that the order is originality, creativity, storytelling, then technical ability, uh, I, to, to think about what originality or creativity is, is you know what we're looking for is somebody that is passionate and engaged in what they're doing. And you can often tell that when you're looking at a, at, at, at a, at a piece of work, a piece of film, because they're not just repeating what's been done a thousand times before. So you're, you're hearing a very specific voice. And sometimes that's a tone. Sometimes that's just the clarity of the genre of the story that they're telling. But that you can just, you can see the passion coming through and the sense of style and originality and creativity very clearly in a piece of film that isn't just repeating things. Because my, many times, There'll be uh, young filmmakers who are looking to find their voice, and that's fine. It's, it's perfectly acceptable because they're young, and they they're still need to sort of look at the standards of what's been done before. But what, when you see something just turned on its head a little bit, that's when you go, ah, oh, it's magic, and you can see it immediately. On the story uh, Sorry, go ahead. 
No, no, no. When you're done, I have a few questions from teachers. So um, please go on. I, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, I just to you know, storytelling is what it is. It's what we do. It's 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 paramount in everything in every class you take, whether it's an editing class or obviously editing, but a, a cinematography class or even a cinema studies class. But on technical ability, one of the things that I think is important is we don't differentiate in terms of whether somebody might be a great student here if they've done no film work at all. That they're, they're completely green. They mm -hmm. may have done. They may have done photography or they may have been artists that's fine because it gives us a sense of their eye and what a frame looks like to them and so it's not essential that it's always in filmed work when you apply here it's okay to send in stills it's okay to send in artwork because it does give us again a sense of what their eye might be I love that um, the I agree. I, I can tell, like, sometimes just the composition alone, the way they set up or frame something, you can tell that even if they're very green, they've got that. Yes. So storytelling and an yes. eye, and we are here to teach them the rest of it. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have some questions from the um, audience. The first one is, um, and, and tag team, you guys just decide who should answer. Um, often our students' finest works are completed toward the end of their senior year. Is it? Ex and remember, this contest is for grades 9 through 12. Is it acceptable to have a student submit that high school work this year, even though they have already moved on to college? Well, um, the answer to the question is, if they're not in 9th through 12th grade, they can't apply to this contest. But can you all address the fact that these students are 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders and their best work is going to be at the end of the school year and we're asking for it now? Um, for, this is Audrey. Um, I think that that's actually fine. Um, I do think, um, you know, um, uh, as Susan said, we, we do expect that people will be in a formative phase of their life. And so we are not necessarily um, um, expecting the, the most um, highly finished or most polished work um, from high school students at this stage in their life because a lot of it is still um, formative. So I, th I think it's fine if, the, if students are still um, submitting for this um, um, on your way competition work that authentically represents um, their vision and direction at this point, um, it, I think that's perfectly fine. Susan? Excellently put. Okay, <laughs> that was easy. The next question, um, I agree. I, I, often schools are, and students are such perfectionists. I love that about the arts. And they, they, you just sometimes have to pull the trigger. Um, if the students are creating a compilation work composed of a number of very short pieces, is it also of interest to you to include on the video file publicity or multimedia images that they've created, such as posters? Uh, can I answer that? Please. Absolutely. Uh, one of the one of the directions that they will take if, if they're if this is if they go into producing is really to understand how to promote your work and how to publicize, how to find an audience. So if a student has in fact done this, it's an excellent way for us to see that they've already addressed these kinds of issues. Oftentimes I find that they're they're so focused on the production process alone that they forget how important all the rest of it is in the process of actually filmmaking. That's true. Like the, Sometimes there's a, a dilution of effort or a quality con jump. So the poster, OK. The poster um, sometimes really tells you that the artist has thought about how the work is going to get received as opposed to the work itself. They're two very different things. Yeah, they're marketing it already instead, yes. of, yeah, instead of making it. So you don't want to see that. That's a distraction. No, no, I do want to see it. Absolutely, oh, you, want to see it. You, you do want to see it. Yes, okay. absolutely. absolutely. Oh, excellent. So, because it's demonstrating that they thought about audience and marketing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Please forgive me. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I'm glad I could clear it up. Great. Well, let's let's slide over to the artist statement. Um, each judge for each art form answers this very differently. Um, I love to have you each, um, and we're we've gone over our 30 mark, so we're going to um, ask for a quick statement. The, about what it, does a filmmaking artist statement look like? And um, I'll just have each one of you please briefly address that. 
Audrey, you want to go first? Um, sure. I think the artist statement is actually uh, very important, and um, I strongly encourage uh, applicants to the On Your Way competition to um, spend the time to actually write one and um, have it vetted by somebody outside of yourself um, so that you can get some feedback on that as well. It's your opportunity to tell us about yourself. It tells us about your um, uh, where you are, where you come from in terms of your artistic output, and also um, where you see yourself going with it. Um, it, it isn't um, necessarily the easiest thing to write, um, but it really is very helpful. Uh, Susan, whoops. So very briefly, I, what we're looking for is, in, in any kind of statement that you make or essay, is to show us your passion and your ability to tell a story. Those are the two most important things. I and love it. And we should get the rest of it, you know, of where you're going in your life and what, what you care about through that, through your passion and through your ability to tell a story. We took a playful angle on this one, and we figured since the last two years kids had such trouble, students fit writing these, I mean, they really were so stressed out about them that we, we removed this from being ranked in the um, scoring of the, of the student's application, but, and we posed them a prompt question that says, where will you be in 20 years? That's actually great that you did that, because so often you'll see artist statements that all about, you know, what inspires them and less about who they are and what their passion is. So that's a great Her, question to ask. Yay! I think it's going to be a blast to read those. I can't wait. I love, I love kids' ambitions. Um, well, you guys have just been such wonderful guests, and you're going to make even better judges. Um, thanks for spending time with me today and, and our membership. This will be... Um, this has been recorded, and we are going to post it on our website, and you can watch it on demand. And I know that teachers are showing these to their students. So, ladies, thank you very much for coming. We hope that um, everyone that's listened today is a member, and if not, please join. And join us in New York City. We're going to be there next week, and it should be a great time. You can see the schedule on our website. Again, thank you for joining us today, and a special thanks to Susan Ruskin and Audrey Tanner for giving us their expertise. Say thank you, ladies. Goodbye.